Hello and welcome to For Truck's Sake, the Road and Load podcast. Do get involved by commenting on all the socials, comment below the videos and stuff. We do like to hear from you guys. Um, me, Joe Forrester here, of course, with Louise and Beth. And I think we need to start with some apologies. Because I, Louise, I was late. And I hold my hands up. I yeah. hold my hands up. I was, I was waiting. I was looking at the clock. I was like, where's Joe? Where, where is he? Hmm? Yeah. Where is he? Hmm? I was, I was keen. Where is he? And well, I he also was. made everybody else be early. You did. <laughs> we had a calendar invite for half past six, and I said, "So we'll see you all. At, we'll see everyone at six, yeah." And everyone was like, "Oh yeah, okay, cool. See you at six. And I just turned up at half past six. So Do you know what, I'm Joe? Really... I ran from the studio today. That's how bad you need to feel. Um, I f- <laughs> did, <know> what? <laughs> did I help? I did not. <laughs> I feel, I feel awful, but the universe has punished me because. Yeah. <laughs> I've been banished from my flat where I normally record um, because my girlfriend's having dinner with her friend. So there wasn't enough space to accommodate both me doing the show and dinner. So You're me and the dog out. are out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very lucky, though. I happen to live near a facility where you can kind of book your own rehearsal studio or like podcast studio or whatever. It's literally five minutes across the park. Brilliant. I thought, I'll take the dog. Off we go. We'll be absolutely fine. So we got there and... Um, there were there were some sort of quite cool young people standing outside. Edgy. So I well, I felt immediately <laughs> intimidated, and they were holding like guitar cases and stuff, and like everybody looked quite cool. And there was an aroma in the air, and I don't think it was potpourri. Put it that way. So, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> It's almost yeah. been own bargains. <laughs> I've, I've never smelt that in Lush. Put it that okay, way. Okay, fair right. enough. You know fair enough. I mean. <laughs> yes. And, and I was getting quite <laughs> flustered because they were sort of all young and cool. And I couldn't work out how to do the door code to get in. Oh, no. And, I was, and the dog was sort of looking up at them like, Daddy, <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> um, yeah, so we, they eventually let me in. And I'm in here now. And what you can't hear is to one side, there's like a rock band rehearsing. So I, I know where like, you are. Hey, I know where know? the studios you're at. Do you know? So, yeah, Pirate Studios in Elsewhere. Pirate Studios, <laughs> absolutely. That's um, it. It's the ambiance. What's weird is they haven't bothered to soundproof it, but because there's no <laughs> staff, there's no one you can say it. <laughs> so you've just got raging rock music coming through. And look, it's a, it's a vibe. That's what we're all about here, Joe. But do you know what, what we're electric, all about? Like, there's a proper electric guitar solo. It's like Slash is next door or something, <laughs> right? Like, honestly. <laughs> and that side... I think it's, I want to say the genre is grime. I think it's, they're grime rappers. Mixing it up. Yeah, it's, um, and then in the middle, <laughs> me and Bridget. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Having the time of your lives, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, also I've got to say, Beth, like what, what a setup you've got behind you. It looks amazing. So cool. Oh, thanks so much, guys. This is the, the, the new setup. It's, this is me, isn't it? What's going on here? Hi, Hi helmets and green plants if i had to sum myself up with three items <laughs> it would be those three things <laughs> what what plants are you rocking um this is a lovely fake one from marks and spencers oh nice. bougie love that can't be held responsible for real plants this is the trouble <laughs> well the well, thing I... is i just i want to place it where i want to place it not where it wants to be placed you know what i mean like it wants to be in the sun but i want it in that corner so have to so have oh i didn't think of that like yeah because it needs sun and stuff doesn't it so like yeah you would have to do that um right anyway um yeah so i, I just want to say i'm very sorry I'm very sorry to you and the viewers and the listeners and i promise it almost certainly won't happen again <laughs> um but louise you've been looking at the most exciting jobs in the trucking industry um how exciting are we talking Well, I've gone into like unusual, right? So Mm. I was looking at what is the most unusual way you can get involved in Mm. trucking. Um, So I actually found a little video of somebody who is driving one of the biggest trucks in the world. And she's absolutely nailing it as well. And I also found that it can actually carry three of the Statues of Liberties on the back of it. It's that big. What? Yeah. How cool is that? Shall I share my screen? Yes, let's let's do it. This is it's, here we go, like a PowerPoint okay. presentation. Here we so, go. Here we go. Right. Share me screen. Share. I feel like a dinosaur. Um <laughs> Okay, here we are. Ever wondered what it's like? Can you see I see that? 
Yes. Hey, ever wonder what it's like to drive one of the biggest trucks in the world? Well, this yes. is what it's like. My name's April Catling, and today I'm driving a Caterpillar 797F rear dump truck at Peak Downs Mine. So, this is our retarder. This is the brake you pretty much use all the time. Your foot brake you only use, which is called your service brake. You only use it when you're going under 10 k's an hour. And your retarder actually has an automatic retard. So when I'm going down this hill, it's going to automatically brake for me, so I don't have to do it. Look how big it is! All automatic. Look at this you can lock it into whatever gear you oh, like, like but ball. yeah, automatic. Literally, it's not a balcony. Change around too much. Right now, the digger is loading us and we're moving forward in queue and we're going to wait there until you it's go. out and then she gets to the dump truck stop, but I'm going to show you guys now, if I can get out of this, um, I'm going to show you what exactly, how much one of these trucks can actually hold, which is so interesting. Let me share my screen. Five ton vehicle is powered by an MTU 20V 4000C22 with a gross power of 2,720 kilowatts. Despite its enormous size, this truck can reach speeds of up to 64 kilometers per hour. The Lieber Lightronic Plus AC drive system with IGBT technology is also used in the T284. It is the lightest ultra-class mining truck, meaning it has the smallest empty vehicle weight while yet providing the largest payload among competitors. All of these characteristics are provided while consuming less gasoline and producing more than 4,000 horsepower. As a result, greater production targets can be met with fewer vehicles and lower costs. And Hotels.com! How do you do? <laughs> nice. They're the new sponsor of the show, they're not. <laughs> there uh, you go. Well, hey, there you go. <laughs> what's quite good about that, though, is because it's got like the little deck, it's almost yeah. like, a, like a yacht. So like, it after, is. after work, you could be like, oh, do you want to like hang out? Do you want to hang out on my truck and like yeah. can have a few drinks? I mean, it's probably not safe to have a few drinks, so don't don't do that. But like, as long mean... as it doesn't get like the Titanic, you'll be all right, won't you? It'll be fine. Also, have you ever seen the the Disney film um, Fern Gully? I actually have. So, I actually have. Have you seen it, Beth? No. <laughs> oh, so it's about um, it's about fairies living in a woodland, and that's almost exactly the sort of truck that comes and destroys the, where they live. But... No way. Oh. <laughs> Not that's to, why I put it on to trigger you. That's why I've done it. <laughs> yeah, not to, not to bring it down. Um, but also that Louise, that woman seemed like she absolutely loved it. She had a big smile on her face. She didn't seem stressed at all by the the power. She nailed it, literally. Like, I mean, can you imagine saying, "What do you do? I just drive the biggest truck in the world, just chilling. That's just what I do. That's mad. That is the most unusual job, but it's so cool." Yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't deal with like the level of responsibility bridget that's enough um, <laughs> we're just like i agree yeah exactly <laughs> yeah she's like dad why are you wasting your life you want to drive one of those yeah yeah <laughs> but absolutely extraordinary um, and beth what have you been looking into so i've been looking into what i think are like the best driving that you could do within like the hgv world mm -hmm. i mean i was going off on a bit of a tangent on this one guys and i started looking into all kinds of other stuff but I'm going to share with you my list of if I could choose like any HGV driving job, this would be my number one. Oh, can't wait. I mean, actually, it's a split between two of these. These would both be really good jobs. So, <laughs> Either one. <laughs> so imagine being someone like Lewis Hamilton, for example. He needs his Formula car, Formula One car to go everywhere with him. Imagine driving his car wherever it needs to go. And going to the tracks and being able to like, you would have to like literally drive it in there, or I, I don't really know how it works. I just, <laughs> over the fence. That's how they do it. Just that's, tip it off, tip yeah. it off. Yeah. It's in there, it's fine. Take the handbrake off, let it roll yeah. off. You're fine. <laughs> that would be so cool, though, wouldn't it? That's again, though, the responsibility of being like that car is worth a million quid or whatever and the rest like i just i would oh it would, it would be too much but that's what you'd want to do beth yeah oh, <laughs> bridget bridget that's quite bridget enough as well. <laughs> with me. Can, can i just say what you can't hear is next door someone is re is remixing cisco's <laughs> cisco's thong song <laughs> so... that timing is perfect could that be the theme of the podcast <laughs> so i'm just kind of like 
so so Beth Beth is talking about like <laughs> delivering F1 cars. I can I can hear the dog barking, the thong songs going off in there. I'm it's so chaos. I'm so sorry, everybody. It's I'm chaos so... here. It's chaos. <laughs> Bridget, enough, enough, darling. Come on, good job. That's enough, sweetheart. I know you're confused. We'll go. We'll get you out of it. Don't worry. Yes, <laughs> Oh dear. So yes. Yeah, so so that that's job number one. What was the other job? Yeah. So and then also like a similar thing, but with motorbikes. So like Harley Davidson being an American company, most of the bikes come in from there. So like you know, if you have got your hands on the newest ones, like the first time they get shipped into the UK, wow. and you go and pick up like the bikes in their crates and go and drop them off and you could be like the one to pretty much see them in the flesh like fresh time. yeah that would be so good so for you in particular that has got to be like a dream come true yeah 100 percent. but i would then want to ride them and i <laughs> yeah. be allowed to do that part so might get fired <laughs> might get fired but you'll have a great time so it might be worth it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because i I've, I've also been asked to to work out what i think might be the best jobs in trucking for you two. Oh, interesting <laughs> so careful so, joe careful so i'm already <laughs> i'm already on thin ice <laughs> um so i did think i thought beth i was trying to think like obviously because you ride bikes i was like what's something like potentially exciting where you can kind of get the speeds up and that kind of thing or something where there's kind of a bit of daredevilry and I did think potentially kind of like those icy roads in Alaska things like that I thought that would suit you quite well um but I also had a look and I did think interestingly based on what Louise said dump truck driver <laughs> because, no way. No because way. They're big beasts like a Harley they're the Harley of the HGV world I thought that would suit Beth quite well um Louise you might you might not be delighted. Yeah, go on. I'm, I'm excited late on me. Go on. Because I am. Um, so what is important to remember is that it <laughs> Here takes... we go. Nothing good <laughs> happens after. What's important to remember here, guys, is we all took part in this podcast. Yeah. Louise yeah. might quit. Yeah. but <laughs> We all tried our hardest. So, um, it takes all sorts of different people and roles to keep a, a trucking or a logistics company running. So yeah. not everybody can be like Beth and be at the sharp end and maybe delivering, I don't know, salmon across the frozen wastes <laughs> of Alaska. I don't know what people are delivering, right? <laughs> Some people, and I'm basing this on having seen your your attempt at the simulator. <laughs> I'm already scared. Okay. Some people are in office. And that's fine. <laughs> so you that is me. Yeah. That is me. That is me. And um, like you know, if someone's stuck. I'm like, just reverse. It's fine. It's easy. That's yeah. what I, that's what I need to do. Yeah, I've told you once, Gary. Anyway, yeah. right? <laughs> on your phone. Yeah. yeah, get around the corner. Anyway, yeah. Well, yeah. Kind so you crush. could be the hub manager. So you've got the setup for your Twitch and stuff with the headset, and so I think it works. I'm gonna get on LinkedIn now and see how many hub <laughs> managers are going. See if I can get a job. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll take it. I'll take it. So you see what's you happy with that? I'm trying I'll take to take it. You now, Joe. We've got to try and come up. <laughs> yeah, we need one. We need. Oh yeah, we need one now. I think I would just be working in like I'd just be in the canteen. Or something <laughs> just like. <laughs> Do you want a Just, sandwich? Yeah. Like, Hello, mate. Oh, is it a long trip? You can have some extra yeah. beans. Don't worry. It's oh, fine. Man. Like, yeah. You're a bean man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Th those those were the roles that immediately kind of sprung out to me. And that was I'll kind of based, based on my chat last time with Declan. And I'm going to be talking to somebody else. Um, I'm going to be talking to Kieran, who comes from a recruitment company. So he places people like Louise sometimes who might have the most skill behind the wheel, but you can... You can <laughs> help elsewhere i'm good on the phone i'm class i'm good yeah, <laughs> yeah they, have you ever worked in a call center by the way i haven't yet because no, i can time. imagine you'd be quite good at it yeah i can chat someone look being a presenter you've got to chat people's ears off why not do it on the phone well why i not? used to this is really bad right and I, I apologize to um i was working for philips the large multinational uh electronics company yeah. so i was working in their call center behind the bingo hall and Mine um bingo <laughs> yeah, 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 great sentence great sentence um, best job i've ever had though she got paid on a friday and there was a like, so there was a bingo hall and then a pub so you got paid on a friday i was like perfect just like <laughs> dream yeah <laughs> so it's important to yeah to have aspirations kids but um 
But I was working there and I was basically a member of, of what was called the welcome team, which was an ill-fated and short-lived uh, invention from Philips. They were like, right, people don't like to come through to like a series of um, robotic options. So like press one for DVDs, press two for kitchenware kind of thing. Like people want to talk to a human. But the problem with that is we're all so used to the robot that yeah. when they would get through to me on the welcome team, and I would be like, hello, Philip's welcome to the Oh my God, yeah, my DVD player's not working. I'd be like, okay, I'll put you through to the DVD department. And they and they would be like, what? What do you mean? Can't you help? I'd be like, no, sir, I haven't had the requisite training, but I'll pop <laughs> you through right now. Um, but the reason I say this, because I just remembered, I worked out that I didn't have to take any calls because what would happen? Someone called me, I'd pick up the phone and then immediately mute it and redial the number of the call line and then it would send them through to someone else, but I would go to the bottom of the call list for people to, so I could sit all day and not take any calls. I, oh, look at I that, just, the dream. <laughs> eating, chilling, eating, it's, it's the dream. I feel like I've just, yeah, I feel like I've been really, really confessing a lot. I'm feeling very guilty. <laughs> it's the Joe confessional moment of the podcast. Welcome um, to the new segment. <laughs> but, but I am going to be talking to Kieran next week, um, who's a recruiter. So I just wondered if you guys have any questions that you feel like I should ask Kieran. Like obviously we want people listening at home and watching at home as well to do the same. But what should I ask Kieran? What do you what do you want to know? I mean Louise, I'm guessing you want to know kind of are their jobs for Oh that uh, is that can I can I I'm good on the phone. Can I come down? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no maybe like one good question um could be you know what what kind of attributes make a good hiree for you know because you've obviously got to be determined and things like that but I wonder if there's anything they look for personality wise that they want to come through as well because you've got to have like you know a good willpower to be able to drive for long periods of time and things like that haven't you so it'd be interesting that's such see. that's mm. actually a very good question yeah, yeah that's a good question i, I know what myself. i'm going to be asking because there was another job high up on the list mm. and that was being like a chauffeur so like imagine mm. you know a cool rock band or whatever your, your favorite kind of music like you know driving a party bus of rock stars around mm. And I want to know how I can do that job. <laughs> that means... Can you get me in? <laughs> I guess you have to be quite discreet. Mm. Because what happens in the truck stays in the truck. It does. Yeah. If you're you driving around, yeah, I can't think of a single, I was going to say Guns N' Roses. There must be a more like modern band. Guns N' Roses. <laughs> yeah. They're a classic. They're a classic. <laughs> they are. Yes, not still 1985. Rock band. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, but still a rock band. It's all right, Joe. But Beth, presumably that means, yeah, that means you're chauffeuring like multiple people because yeah. if it's an HGV, you're not like, there's not just one person like right <laughs> at the back. <laughs> no, you would imagine that it's going to be a lot of people in there, but you know, like those tour buses, they're massive, yeah. aren't they? they yeah. yeah. Bridget agrees. They <laughs> are... <laughs> she loves Guns N' Roses. She loves Axel Rose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they sleep in there, they eat in there. They've got like, it's all going on, isn't it? And then they've got like a bar and, who knows what else? So, like, if that would be a massive lorry or coach thing. I don't know, whatever. Wouldn't who, it? So who cool. would be your dream people to show for then? Oh. That's hard. <laughs> Dog, I'm so right, Bridget. Bridget, no, that's enough. You won't be invited again. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> My dream um, man. That is a really tough question. I, actually, do you know what? I tell you. The lineup for download this year, I am going to download for the first time. I'm such a rock fan. It's insane. First time I'm going, and I would be prepared to get my my license if I could get like a, a coach big enough to transport the whole lineup. That would be great. Oh, so I want Metallica in there. <laughs> I want uh, Bring Me the Horizon. You've got Slipknot, but you got to get how are you going to get all the Slipknot in? There's loads yeah. of them. It's going to be tough, but you know, <laughs> it's hard. And, and are I'm they gonna wearing the masks when they're when they're travelling and they're having a bit of downtime and like playing Scrabble on the tour bus? They're not dressed like that, are they? Because that's like that's not comfortable for a long road trip. <laughs> you know, all the spikes. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Because what if you've got to like go to the loo or you pop in the microwave on and like? Yeah, yeah. Just, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they won't be allowed to wear those because that's too scary for me. So I, they'll have to take that off. 
Oh, yeah, your truck, your rules. <laughs> yeah. You set the boundaries, Beth, that's the way. Yeah. Come on, Metallica, on you, you come. Got, Whoa, yeah. get that off right now. Yeah. I don't yeah. look in the rear view. I don't know why you're a Yorkshireman. <laughs> Where did that actually come from? That would be quite a good reality show, though, wouldn't it? Like, oh, the, yeah. yeah, call it the back of the bus and just stick loads of cameras in and put loads of rock bands in a bus and you just drive them around. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens. It. <laughs> Dragon's dead. Um, also, Beth, I, I'm actually going to Glastonbury this year. Have you got Have you got any advice? I've never been. I've been. I've worked at festivals. I've never been to a festival as a punter, and I'm starting with Glastonbury, and I'm a bit frightened. Well, I wish I could help you, Joe, but um, actually, Download's going to be my biggest festival. Pretty much the first festival. Just before that, I only been to one like much smaller one, so I'm a bit of a virgin myself. Can't really help. But Louise, you're you're cool. You must have been to like festivals and things. I've been to many. I've been to many. Um, yeah. Glastonbury is a big one to start with, though. Glastonbury is a big one. Um, I, I'm guessing you're camping. Yeah, I'm a bit anxious about the the inability to wash. Mm, uh, you're not going to enjoy the toilets, and I'm going to just put that up oh. there right here, right now. Um, and they do do showers at festivals. The cues are one thing. The second thing is make sure you bring some sliders because you don't want bare feet on those balls. Just going to say. Oh, same. that's a good idea. And if there's something brown on the floor, ignore it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you are the truth. There's your festival truth. Wow. Oh, um, well, have a great time. <laughs> I do need to confess, I am not camping at Download. That's why I don't, don't do festivals. You. I'm not up for camping at a festival. Don't blame you. So I'm stacking down the road. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I honestly, it's I, grim. It gets I grim. wanted to do this. I was like, let's stay in the Premier Inn. If it's good enough for Lenny Henry, it's good enough for us. And <laughs> then we'll just we'll just bus in. We can go on. We can go on best truck every day. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, done deal. Oh dear. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so I have to ask uh, Kieran, how can you become the person who drives the HGV full of rock stars around? <laughs> And also, Mate, what, what, the, not. <laughs> yeah, what are the key attributes you're looking for? Okay, right. Those have been noted down. Um, right, that's it from us for this episode. Um, thank you very much for listening slash watching. Um, we will see you uh, next time. Do get involved in the comments and social media and all that kind of thing. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Louise. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me again. Uh, thank you very much, Beth. <laughs> thank you also. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and Bridget's also here. <laughs> <laughs> oh.